The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know their inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who you love. Through Jesus Christ, your Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the covering that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then God, Lord God, will wipe away the tears from all faces. The disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on this day, See, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord God for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. At this time, I want to invite those who are ages five to nine who want to join Miss Audrey in the back to head downstairs for Sunday school. Uh, students will return to us after the sermon. The rest of the assembly invite you to please stand as you are comfortable for the Holy Gospel. <laughs>
Gospel according to John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the mourners who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. The people in the crowd began to remark, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept his man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and the stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. That man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of clothes, and his face wrapped in clothes. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the gospel of the Lord. You might be seated. Have you ever met people who have a quick answer when you suffer a loss? People who might say, oh, you get over it quickly, oh, cheer up, or it was for the best of all or especially when we mourn uh, loss of a child, now the good Lord has one more angel in paradise. And at CPE, which is Clinical Pastoral Education, I heard maybe the worst. You may not, may not understand it now, but God has a plan, or it's all God's plan. So, if you only take away one thing of this sermon, please don't use uh, this phrase. <laughs> and I don't know how these words make you feel, but if you have a loss or it makes me comfortable or made me comfortable when I experienced the loss of my mom when I was 11 years old, accident, or my youngest brother later on, died in a lake, swimming lake, just before his 21st birthday. And don't get me wrong, I know these words are good, intentional, and maybe I used some of these, not it's all God's plan, but I used some of them before, if I'm shocked and not prepared for a sudden loss. So it's human and well in good intentions, but the message I get behind these attempts and we have is consolation. Everything has to make sense somehow and come on, it's not bad, pull yourself together as quickly as possible. Yeah, maybe also we use or people say such words because 
they simply not know how to deal with someone else's grief or pain, especially if you're younger. And we probably also have to admit to ourselves that we don't actually want to deal with it. Because grief and pain scare us, we don't know what to say or how to act. Maybe pandemic, there was so much loss, we couldn't hide it anymore, it kind of shocked, panicked a lot of people. Nowadays, in the modern civilizations, we have the grief or old people dying separated in clean hospitals or hospice. Um, so, of course, we want to pull ourselves together, have help, want to be friendly, and are not trained with this grieving. And there is a reason also in the modern civilization, we have grieving experts, I mean, here, Pastor and me, or maybe some others, we are kind of gifted and trained. It's one of my reasons I want to be a deacon. I love chaplain, chaplain work and kind of trained, and you get supervised and learn together and prepare things. But without professional grief support, it's hard to find in our Western capitalistic system. And we often don't know even ourselves, not even we can deal with others. We don't know ourselves how to control the loss or grief. The environment teaches us to be strong and under control. Smile even when it tears apart inside. So we have very complicated relationships to our feelings and emotions. Different ways, being stoic, hide them away, or complete meltdown, or whatever, we are humans, everyone has ways, or sometimes we kind of try to hide or don't even use emotion, just work. And you know, when I feel like crying, it's as a professional, don't do, but sometimes at deacon work, I can go to Graceland Cemetery, cry with people, or just keep company. You don't have to say a lot all the time. Silent prayer, it's called a ministry of presence. That's a, a second advice maybe you, you want to keep. And in these mornings, if we allow ourselves to show the pain, use the pain, even we are scared to show it in the public or in our job settings. We have parks, we have outside, we have friends. And all these pain, maybe there was a traditional thing by wearing black outside, if you have a loss, so people know from the outside, okay, there is, be careful with me, I experienced a loss recently. I think we kind of run out of these traditions. I'm kind of reminded with preparing with the sermon, maybe it's not that bad of a tradition. So loss, grief, death. What has become of them in our time and society? We hide it, we try to deny it. We don't allow to really affect us, but think about it, if we hide it and complete oppress, it will come back earlier, sooner, at one point. And usually, if it comes back, then with a retribution, with a can be harder or unexpected or can go on our body, show some signs of sickness. And even we as Christians should say, oh, we also try to run the system. So I would not say it's others, it happens. And we don't give the grief every time the space it should need. Being a little too quick to point in the resurrection circle, we have the Good Friday, and there would be no the power of resurrection if we don't pay time and attention to the Good Friday and the suffering. Yeah, and Christ became 
overcome and overcame death and the suffering and death has lost its sting but still death is the reality for our human world and our redemptive and liberating power of the Easter morning can only happen with this death and suffering, even if it's sorrowful. In all of this, death is not the will or plan of God. Jesus becomes very sorrowful and he faints in his body when he hears of the death of his friend Lazarus in the Gospel today. A better translation or approach might be that Jesus is upset and frustrated as he experiences firsthand the power of death. His disciples, they are there, but his friend, Lazarus, brother of Mary and Martha, is passed away, not prepared. So even Jesus experiences this loss, prepared on his own suffering loss, but this is not expected. So Jesus is now our human counterpart for suffering, for mourning, and grieving. Jesus does not speak easy words, oh, come on, Mary Martha, it's okay, just keep your head up, or Jesus mourns with them, and Jesus is crying with them. This is one of Jesus' most human moments, in my opinion. He shares with us this experience, a true fellow human being. Jesus is vulnerable, shows his despair, and he reveals that as a human being, he also has his weaknesses and is not ashamed of them in public and a crowd of most of them strangers to him. Maybe you have heard the expression WWJD, I forgot my bracelet, and anyone <laughs> remembers any of this time? So, in this case, we have an explanation what Jesus would do, and I guess we have the explanation what he would not do. <laughs> so, what do we think Jesus would do in our world today, with all the critical situations worldwide, not only our personal sufferings, but war? flooding, nature disasters, or our election is coming up, so critical political situations. I think he sometimes still weeps with us, for us, and mourns with us in our presence. And also points out the All Saints community, which is not the original one, we just have the saints, one pope fits out. I want to point out one all saints for me as a Lutheran. It's a saint for us all. All our people we lost, if we knew them or not. It's not only the disciples or some popes or some martyrs. It's all people of us, friends, family. We know them, we remember them. We keep them in our community of saints. That's our Lutheran approach and have candles and bells for them in our mind, in our spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit. So now I have the Jesus part as a human part and the Holy Spirit and the community of saints we have in the great in our third part. Now let me end with God because in the reading from the prophets Old Hebrew Testament up to the end revelation. We don't, we have apocalyptic, but in revelation we even have the great idea in the readings to kind of God with his motherly care weeps away our tears. He dries them and as we heard in the reading, we can now be sure after this gospel today, God weeps with us. God knows how much a loss hurts us. And God shares in our suffering. We come with our tears. We come to him with what hurts us, what is worthy and right. We do not have to hide our feelings from God, who knows what it means to weep and mourn. And God, like a mother, he holds us in his arms, wipes away our tears with gentle hand.
This is a God who wants to be close to us, who touches us, and who shares in our suffering. And this is the same God who promises us, I am with you always. Death and mourning and weeping will be no more. Trust me. I share in your suffering. I have even gone through death myself. Come walk with me into a new life, for behold, I make all things new. Amen. gathered together on this All Saints Sunday, we are gathered to remember all of the saints. Saints are not just perfect Christians. Saints are people who have been made whole by God's grace through baptism into Christ. So together we take time to remember the diverse array of saints who remind us of God's continued faithfulness in the past, in the present, and into the future. Gathered here at the font, the birthplace of our Christian faith and life, we first remember the saints who have died and who celebrate with us God's holy meal every time we gather at our table of communion. Today we remember Herman Hymns. Michael Morrison. Heather Zeinert. Terry Tomlin. Mary Beth Brewster. Jude Dofrido. Lori Bosco. Joseph Burakovsky. The Reverend Ruth Vandemark. Margaret Wasilewski. Andrew Travis Brown. Bernice Burakovsky. Gilbert Davis. Stan, Stanley Lukasiewicz. Marge Keo. Hilda Davis. Alfred Charco and other murdered indigenous children. Sharon Davis. Logan Evans. Larry Lexton. Will Keogh. Sean Lukasiewicz. 
Jeffrey Glumbicky. Dewey Wolfreath. Jose Moreno. Joseph Lukasiewicz. David Swanson. Mary Posa Cross. Ginny Valbreth. Harold Reitke. Marion McDade. Teresa Bratz. Lois Smedley. Suzanne Keogh. Vanity Williams and all transgender and gender expansive individuals who have been killed. Doris McCambridge. Harvey Valreth. Daniel Brown. Rose Lynch. Louisa Cross. Michael McDade. Edwin Ramazzo. Katrina Brown and all those killed by gun violence. Carol Laxton. Furman Mason. Nancy McCall. Anid Rowland. Matthew Mercer. Richard McCall. Esther Reitke. Ruth Colby. Shandira Perpetua de Costa. John T. McCambridge, Sr. George Arthur Huntington. Linda Lewis. Janina Novak. Marie Huntington. Don Rowland. Amber Nicole Thurman and those denied life-saving miscarriage care. Juan Vinicius Oliveira Costa. And Janice Milio. Today we give thanks for these saints and the many others who have shown God's love, grace, and justice in this world. Because today is not only a day where we remember those who have died, we also remember those who have joined in the sainthood through baptism. And for this next part, instead of a children's message today, I'm wondering if any children want to come forward and help me pour a little bit of water in the font as we say each name. Do you want to come on down? I need your help. Come on down. Alice, you want to come on? <clears throat> yeah, come on, Alice. 
Oliver, did you want to come? <clears throat> We're going to come right over here. Come on up here, Alice. So today on All Saints Day, we're remembering all those who have been baptized. Have you been baptized? You have. I baptized you. I know that for sure. And I baptized you and you. I know all three of you have been baptized. So I know the answer to that question. No misinformation here. Um, Oh, maybe too, too tender? I know, sorry. What we're going to do today is we're going to remember all the people who we baptized this year, which is pretty cool. And I'm wondering if you can help me. After Vicar says their name, we're going to ring some handbells, our musician is, and then the big bell, and then I'm going to invite each one of you. I'm going to give one at a time for each name. You can come forward and you can pour it in the font. Does that sound cool? Okay, so I'm wondering, can the three of you line up right here for me? And Alice, I'm gonna have you go first. You can be first right here, Alice. And we're gonna, what we're gonna do is, as Vicar says the name, then I'm gonna hand you a cup, and then you can come over and pour it into the font, okay? So now let us remember together all of those who have been baptized in this last year. Ain McDade. Pour it in there. Nice job. Thomas Travnik. Lillian Radliff. Isaiah Christopher Tice. Great. Glenn Anderson. Lucas Anderson. Rosemary Powell. Dean Harvey. Sophia Ramasso. Annalise Dalval. Nice job, everyone. Well, today we give thanks for all of the baptized who have become saints striving for God's justice, peace, and love. And let us now pray together. We praise and bless you, Holy Trinity. You have welcomed all the baptized into the communion of saints. Help us remember those who have died as witnesses to your never-ending love. Gather those dead and living to become one around your table and at the font so that we may become the body of Christ. We pray all of this in the name of our creating, redeeming, and sustaining God. Amen. Thank you all for your help, and you can head back to your seats. Well, on All Saints Day, not only do we remember all of the saints by 
speaking their names into this place. But so too, we offer you the opportunity to come forward and to light a candle in remembrance of a loved one or to honor the dead. You might remember that during our baptismal liturgy, we light a candle from the large paschal candle there to remind us that Christ illuminates our world to seek justice and peace. And so I would invite you at this time to come forward. You're going to be dismissed by ushers into the center row. And there's going to be a large basket here with unlit candles. And then right after that, there's going to be a small wooden taper and some lit candles. And so I would invite you to take one of the candles and to light it, and then to take a moment to come forward and put it around the table. Wherever you'd like, at whatever level, you also might have brought a memento or a picture with you. This is your time that we're going to make a, a table, an ofrenda of sorts, as we honor those who have gone before us reminding us visually today as we remember each and every Sunday that all of those who have gone before us are gathered around this table every time we partake in communion. And so I now invite you to reflect and wait as the ushers invite you to come forward.
Congregation, I invite you to please stand as you are comfortable and join me in singing hymn 422 in the Red Hymn.
Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. O oh God of resurrection, you call us by name and raise us to life. Rouse your church from slumber, where we have held back in fear or shame, unbind us. Embolden us in our proclamation of your good news, that all may know abundant life, especially in Oceania, American Samoa, Cook Islands, Fiji, French Polynesia, Kanaki, Kiribati, Marshall Islands, Micronesia, Nauru, Na Nui, Pelu, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu, and Vanuatu. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God of creation, you have founded your world on rivers and seas, preserve fresh water sources and the creatures who call them home. Heal places of pollution and nourish places of drought. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God of earth, you reign over all nations and peoples. Inspire us with wisdom and discernment as we elect legislators and leaders. May they govern with justice and uphold the dignity of all people. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God of heaven, you make your home among mortals. Come alongside those who weep this day. Befriend all who are lonely, encourage those in despair, and heal any who are suffering, especially those we name now, whether silently or aloud. Abide with your faithful ones in love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God, Alpha and Omega, we give thanks for your faithful ones who are now at peace with you. With all your saints, we praise you, for you have swallowed up death forever. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer our prayers to you gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. And once we've had a chance to pass the peace, you may be seated. And on this Sunday where we remember all of the saints, we also are excited to welcome any of you who are visiting us for the very first time. Please know that wherever you are on your spiritual or religious journey, you are welcome here in this place. So then we get a chance to welcome you even more fully. I want to direct your attention to the link in the QR code that's on your screen or is in your bulletin. If you follow that link in QR code, it's going to take you over to our link tree. And there you'll find the digital connect card. And if you're here in person, there's also a physical connect card in the pew in front of you. We'd love to have you fill that out. Let us know that you're visiting with us today. And we'll reach out and, and share some more information about our community and offer a way to just learn a little bit more about us and ways that we can journey together as a community of faith. Today, after our dismissal in this space, our service continues in the fellowship hall for a time of conversation and snacks. This is the time where we get to embody what we proclaim during worship, where we get to know one another a little bit more deeply. And so don't be afraid to reach out to somebody new, or if you're going for the very first time, 
please, 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 we love um, to welcome new folk. And so there are plenty of drinks and food for you to um, enjoy today. A few very brief announcements. Um, you might have noticed that last Sunday we started our youth group, and our youth group will continue on the second and fourth Sunday of the month. That's for ages 10 to 13. Did I get that right? 10 to 13. And it'll be during service just like our Sunday school. And so it'll be um, education time geared specifically to those who are 10 to 13, and that'll be next Sunday on the second Sunday of the month and continuing second and fourth Sunday moving forward. If you have any questions about youth group, you can talk to Vicar um, and or Allison Young, who's our, or who's our Crucifer today, and she'd be happy to help you or Vicar would as well. A few other things. Um, next Sunday begins our Advent season, believe it or not. Here at Wicker Park Lutheran Church, we do a seven-week Advent, which is the more historical length of the Advent season, and so we will be starting that next Sunday. Our theme for this year's Advent is Awakening Awareness. And so we're going to be focusing on the ways that we can be more aware of God's presence in our lives and among us um, as we are awakened during this season of preparation of Advent. So get a chance to check out a few announcements in your bulletin. We'll be rolling out um, our Advent project soon. And I want to, we're going to do like we did last time, which is if you have an idea of what our celebration can be for hitting that Advent project goal, um, we'd love to have you write it on the dry erase board in the fellowship hall today. Today. And we're going to take all of those into consideration. This is how we got the superhero worship and superhero party last time. Um, and so if you've got a great idea for a way that we can collectively celebrate reaching that goal, please write it on the dry erase board today as we begin to announce what our Advent project will be. The final announcement that I have is as we've done the past, oh, what, four um, Advent seasons, we will continue to offer the opportunity for you to host the Holy Family. So it's a small nativity set that moves from family to family throughout our congregation before finally making its way here um, to Wicker Park Lutheran Church on Christmas Eve. Um, so if, if you are interested in learning more about that, that's in your bulletin. Now I know the deadline's coming up very soon, which is this Friday at noon, because the family is starting their joint journey on the first Sunday of Advent. So um, fill out um, the information about um, that Holy Family and hosting them, and included with hosting the Holy Family, we invite you, if you'd like, there's going to be devotional guides in there that you can participate in that Advent awareness um, during that time. And we'd also love, for, if you'd like, to take a picture of the Holy Family displayed in your house, and we'll be posting that on social media so that we might all kind of feel a little bit more connected to the Holy Family's journey this Advent season. With all of that said, um, we are now about to celebrate around our table of Holy Communion. And as we remember all of the saints gathered here by, witnessed by these candles, so too you all are welcome to come forward and participate in this holy meal. And now we give of our offerings, not because we earn our way to the table, but rather we give of God's abundance so that we can be the saints of God in this place, serving one another with love and justice and peace. So I invite you to reflect on the gifts that you've already given or to give electronically in the plate now, knowing that you are helping to partner with our God and living out what it means to be a saint in following Christ.
Please stand as you are comfortable. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of the saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with all of the saints, with the choirs of angels and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise. Beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We give you thanks for your dear Son, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. In the night in which Christ was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and then gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Eat of this bread often in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this cup often in remembrance of me. Remembering Christ's love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Amen. And now gathered by the Spirit's motherly care, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Please stand as you are comfortable. And as you go forth this day, go with this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you with grace and abundant mercy. And may God look upon you with favor and give you everlasting peace. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.